everybody. Welcome to another edition of Carpels and Cannulas. Tonight we have an exciting topic to discuss. Myself and Dr. Greer, who will be joining shortly, there she is waving, um, is going, we're going to talk about the three plastic surgery procedures we would never personally have. And I am excited to talk about, because there's so many things I would do if I had the time, but um, a few that are on my no list. So as soon as she requests the ability to get on, we will engage on that. And I see Kelly's here with us. Hi. Um, hi, everybody. Just waiting for Dr. Greer to get her uh, internet working, I guess. And then, um, actually, this was inspired by Dr. Colleen's post about five surgeries um, that she would never have. And I feel like we share some of them, maybe for different reasons. I'm trying to view her request. Sorry. Okay, go live. Hopefully she pops up. I swear to God, I switched to AT&T and I still have the slowest internet ever. There you oh, are. I yeah. requested it. It wasn't going through. I I can't with, you know. Um, do that. Okay. So. Oh, all right. Well, I was just sharing with our listeners um, what we were going to talk about, which is three procedures that we would never ourselves have personally. And I'm going to guess one of them we probably have in common with Dr. Colleen and... I'm going to guess you probably also are not a fan of having a BBL for yourself. Ding, ding, ding. And I'm going to have broadband <laughs> light because I love those. But yeah, that is top of my list. I would not have fat grafting to the buttocks. And I wouldn't get butt implants either. Oh, yeah. Nobody should get butt implants, I don't think. I feel like that's not a good idea in general. But for anybody. But, um, I mean, I can't imagine. There are surgeons doing them. Actually, I know. Like, pretty do them now. They're just, they're actually breast implants, so there's, yeah, and you're going to sit on them, and I just don't feel like that's going to hold up over time, and then when you expand that area and then take it out, it's not going to go well. That being and said. And fat grafting, I mean, that just, if you gain weight, plus that whole, like, 3% risk of death, I'm not cool with, or 3 in a 1,000, sorry, 0.3% risk, but still higher than I want. Yeah, I just don't really, if I want a bigger booty, I think I would want muscle mass there. I'd want a toner posterior. Yeah. Squats. So I don't, and I feel like it's, I feel like my butt's already kind of big and I don't need any more fat back there. And it makes clothes kind of hard to wear or find yeah. or any of that. And then it's not like you're getting a perfectly sculpted uh, airbrushed photoshop booty it's still your booty with just more fat in it i don't know yeah and then imagine gaining 20 pounds in 10 years it's not good. yeah no. no so that's a no so okay so that tops the list there mm -hmm. what about um all right what's else what else is on your list of things not to have done red lift mm. I don't want to thread lift. They come back into fashion every so often. And I know we have they a couple do. colleagues who do use them and get good results. But I just feel like if something's asymmetric or there's little, like, irregularities or, like, tucks and darts, anyway, it's impossible to get them out. So That's true. At least they're not permanent like um, the original ones were. That's true. Yeah. I remember when I was in training, the original ones were popular, and I didn't do them in training, but this um, very gay um, spin instructor had had it done that I knew from the gym, and uh, I was like, I was frightened for him. Yeah. But they're permanent. Those were permanent sutures, and then they had issues where people were lasered over them, and it melted the suture, which was kind of a disaster. So at least now they're not permanent, and they dissolve, and they're supposed to stimulate collagen. It always looks really cool on Instagram. It does. But it does. I agree. Not a fan. And then um, Kelly mentioned this in her list of things she didn't want to have done. It was the upper lip lift, which... Mm. I've 
strongly consider doing myself because I have a long upper lip, but I would not be a good candidate for it because my the base of my nose is pretty narrow. Pretty so narrow. it would look yeah. super weird. So I think that's one of those surgeries. Yeah, yours would just be like right in the middle. <laughs> for health. I it can look like good on the right person. What? I know Deborah White in Arizona does a ton of them and she gets really nice results, but mm -hmm. I think you're right, patient selections. Important. I probably will scar with a darkened scar because I'm um, of Hispanic origin and my nose is so narrow that it would just be a central lip lift, which would look super weird. And I'd look like the Queen of Hearts or something on Alice in Wonderland. So, no. I mean, that would be, that would be a look. <laughs> yes, if I was into like, uh, gonna be on American Horror Story or something, maybe that would be yeah. a good like, yeah. look. So yeah, so that's a no for me. A no to the thread list. I'm honestly thinking of what else. I know, I'm thinking, I mean, like, I, I have a list of definitely wands. I would like a <laughs> lift. I would like Galaflex with that. If I can find someone nearby who does it, I would like a tummy tuck. I know. I would like a diastasis repair. Yes. <sighs> yes to that. I have a little pot belly when I relax. Yeah. I debate There's about implants, though. I really do debate about implants. Like, I like the volume. Don't know that I ever want surgery again. Kind of okay with being a B cup. Oh, right. I always yeah. tell patients about implants. It's really, you really have to want to have that upper pole fullness. Or yes. you have no other options for volume. So I was pretty flat. I was like a B minus, and I have smallish implants. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. TikTok did seem. Yeah, that I was like aghast. I would have lost my freaking mind over the platysma bands. All, first of all, you can just do that with Botox, A. And second of all, Dr. McLean's mentioning that her, um, somebody made a comment about her needing a plati her platysma bands taken care of or a neck lift. And I love I how people feel like commenting on your appearance is totally valid. Um, yeah, people have commented on how I blink slower in my left eye. Thanks. Like, it's not from Botox, okay? That's just my face. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I'm sure after this little discussion, people will be like, you have implants? And I'm like, yeah, you don't have to have them to like, like they don't have to be like, look, I have implants. You could just, be, just be like, not so oh flat. yeah, if I were any smaller than I am, it would be a definite yes. I'm just like kind of on the fence because I, I know they look beautiful. I just don't know if I care that much. Right, right. No, and it, I feel like that gets to the heart of, so there's, like I said, things, I'll <laughs> add calf implants. It's I, just my face. Sorry. I want that t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my face. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> I can just be like, it's, I mean, no, I have implants. Okay. Sorry. Sorry to disappoint. Um, yeah, I think it's a, uh, it's that be risk benefit. Like you have to really want it. Otherwise, I, like I said, there's a litany of things I would do if I had unlimited right. time to recover and money. Right. It's the hassle factor. Like, this is why I haven't, <laughs> Bridget, that's my nanny saying she'll give us some of hers. Her <laughs> dream procedure is reduction. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. It's like that hassle factor. Like, I could go get a tummy tuck. It's just like, mm, do I care that much to take the time off? Nah. Yeah. And I really started thinking about this the other day because I did see a patient who it's always frightening when it's somebody whose physical attributes resemble yours. And so she has similar abdomen in that she doesn't have very fat and very little skin laxity and really just needs a diastasis repair. So a so-called mini tummy tuck, but her belly button's not low enough or high enough that you could just float it anyway, but it really bothers her. And then I go home and think, oh shoot, should my abdomen really like, bother me? Should I care more about my, I don't know, everybody has their thing. <laughs> That's why when people come in and they're like, tell me what I need, I'm like, I don't know what bugs you. Cause like things bug me on my face. Like I would like a lateral brow lift. I feel like I have really straight eyebrows. I guarantee no one else notices this. Correct. Yeah. So yes, it is part of what really bothers you and keeps you up 
late at night. And then unfortunately in our world, we're always like looking at things that could be improved in other people. And so it is human nature to be like, huh, maybe I could use that. And I'm going to be right yeah. behind Kelly with a neck lift because I have like, my platysma is, you know, over. I, mm -hmm. I know, but mine's been functioning like it's, I call it the muscle of horror. I look like one of those lizards that like, <laughs> What's up? Like a Jurassic Park. Yeah, and they're like, yes, that's <laughs> it's so funny. So yeah, but I was gonna say, speaking of things that I absolutely don't care about, but I can say is a physical weakness on my part is that my calves are small. No matter you know, I would have to dedicate like an hour a day to calf raises or something to get large calves. But the idea of putting calf implants in is so just. Oh yeah, no, I would never. I my only experience with calf implants was watching a like a Discovery Channel show where the guy got necrotizing fasciitis afterward. Oh yeah, that that actually happened down here in San Diego. Somebody went across the border and ended up with their legs amputated. This was probably twenty years ago, but still. Oh. Yeah, I would. I would get liposuction on my legs. It would have to be. I would probably go to Meek and Gruber because she's mm -hmm. amazing. But it, again, one of those things where I'm like, do I really care about my cankles? Not that much. <laughs> Although yeah. I, my, one of my That's chief residents okay. pointed out my ankles versus his very slender ankles. Johnny Franco, I'm calling you out. In residency, he's like, no, that is kind of a cankle. I'm like, are you for real? Really? <laughs> I mean, yeah, they are. But do we have to say it out loud? <laughs> we could do a cankle <laughs> transplant and you can put the fat in my ankles and calves and then I'd have a more balanced uh, That's fantastic. Calf. We'll yeah. get right on. <laughs> It'd be like um, a living donor calf transplant. <laughs> so, it's like all the people who try to donate their extra skin to the burn unit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, except you can't be alive for that. I yeah. always thought like if you were an identical twin... Mm. and you had the same genes, so no immune suppression, and your twin had, like, you know, very severe birth, would they let you donate skin? I feel like it doesn't work. I feel like Really? That, like, probably Has I been trying? Like I don't know. Yeah. I feel like you still would need immunosuppression, unfortunately. Maybe somebody smart mm. enough can answer that question. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, well, what's your third surgery? So, we, BBL for both of us. No thread lift, yeah. upper lip lift. Including butt implants. And I don't know that I have a third one. I mean, the other ones I wouldn't want, I don't really need. Like, I wouldn't really want a rhinoplasty because that packing sounds miserable, but my nose is fine. I mean, it's a little crooked, but it's okay. What about, yeah, you don't really need anything, so it's hard to say. But even if you didn't need it, sometimes it's not a need. Is there something you would be like, I'm never doing ear pinning surgery or arm lift or... I don't know. Those are all, I feel like, reasonable options for people. Yeah, no, I don't. What about thigh lift? That's a brutal one. Like, if you needed it. Oh, I would do it in a heartbeat. I've thought about, <laughs> like, I've thought about getting one. I have lipo there. There's just, a, I'm like, can I do my own? I mean, <laughs> I almost could. Oh, yeah, no, I've thought about that one. That one's not a problem. Okay, so that's still on the maybe list then. Mm-hmm. Recovery is kind of brutal, so... Yeah, I suppose it is a bit, but I don't know. Talk to me in 20 years when my thighs are all creepy and saggy. Yeah, I don't, maybe that bodes well for me that there's only like two procedures that I really <laughs> don't love. And they're not ones I do because again, I'm like, I don't like the whole reasoning. I don't like the outcomes. I do I do think Else. I just think in the right patient and in the right, and I don't do over the top ones either. Right. I mean, if you're fixing like a hip dip or just changing mm -hmm. proportions, totally different ball game than just doing this enormous butt. Right. And I do have, I personally have a hip dip, but I still do not want anyone making my butt any bigger. I just can't. I know. Okay. <laughs> wait, liposuction to the butt. Now that's probably what I would not do either yeah no although, we'll although probably... i know again dr gruber does it I, that was like one of those things we just were taught never really to do in residency have you ever life out a butt no probably Me like, right above, like the lower back but not the butt itself 
Right. Because I feel like things would get all saggy and loose and bad. Although I think the times I've heard Dr. Gruber refer to doing it, it's usually to correct mm -hmm. back grafting. Correct. Which I think in 10 years we'll probably be, we'll have learned how to do that. Yeah, because there's going to be flowing, a lot right? with that. Yeah. Oops, so my cat hitting the, hitting the phone. I will say, like, fat graft into the face would have to be pretty cautious, too. I do that, well, actually, I've decided to, yeah, I don't, I don't actually do that very often to the face. I've done it. But I think the people who go way over with the volume, like, I like dissolvable fillers. I like, oh, I wouldn't do permanent fillers. That's one. There we go. I would never do, like, uh -oh. fill or fill. Yeah, or like the Gore-Tex to the upper lip. Mm. Yeah, no, I want things that are dissolvable and that go away on their own when it comes to stuff like that. So I wouldn't do permanent filler. That's my favorite. Okay, that's fair. I would say fat grafting to the face. That's another big reveal. I had that done years ago now. Really? Is that why you have such great cheeks? <laughs> no, I, I always had those and I hated them. But now I tell my kids if they like hate their chubby cheeks, hey, guess what? It pays off later. But I actually did it on a dare, as most plastic surgeons do. <laughs> Was it a hold my beer moment? <laughs> yeah, hold my beer, watch this. So we had a surgeon who was a reservist and he was at Navy and we were having a discussion because that grafting at the time was like a little bit controversial to do at the time of facelift. Now it's pretty standard. And then there was a big debate whether you fat graft at the beginning of the facelift or at the end of the facelift. I feel like we were having this conversation. And then he mentioned, well, you could just fat graft. And I was like, yeah, but nobody wants to go under anesthesia just for fat grafting. And he's like, oh, you can absolutely do it under local. I was like, no way. No one's going to do that. And um, mind you, I was still in the Navy and not in a private practice setting. So I had a more narrow scope of, he's like, yeah. I'll bring my centrifuge in and we'll just do you. And I was like, um, okay, cool. So he's like, we'll do it under local. My scrub techs were so excited. You could have sold tickets. He like- That's hilarious. I know, everybody's like, you watch. You see like people peeking around the door. It's awesome. Yeah, so he was gonna do it in the clinic, in the office setting. And we started in there and then he was like, nope, you're right. We need to go to the little procedure room. I'm like, mm, all right, so already anteing up. And then, um, he light put a little bit out of my outer thigh, spun it down, and then fat grafted my face. That was enough to make me know that I would never, like, I don't think I would do yeah. this to somebody else because in order to block the face was so painful. And I did look like a pumpkin for about two weeks. And like those cannulas, as fine as they are for the face, and they are, and they clog all the time, and it's annoying. That's a pretty big cannula to be sticking. I mean, that's <laughs> it was what crazy. eighteen gauge to be sticking bluntly in somebody's face. That's not going to feel awesome. Yeah. So he did my temples, my cheeks. I don't think he did my lips, but like nasal labial lines, maybe down here somewhere. I will say the one benefit of doing it is whatever that substances in that's mixed in with your own fat there's like some growth factor component to it the fat's long gone like that disappeared after a couple years easily but it definitely like gave me a healthy glow and rejuvenation that lasted much longer so how about just some prp that? huh yeah PRP. how about just some prp get those same growth factors yeah i'm gonna do that tomorrow actually Oh, are you? How do you? Do you inject? Do you do microneedling? What do you do? So I don't offer it in my office as of yet, but the OR techs, the OR team I work with, they are surgeons in Fiji, hopefully not watching this Instagram live. And <laughs> we're going to have, we Regardless if he is, you're definitely not using his PRP centrifuge. Definitely not. <laughs> They've been offering me their M sculpt. Oh, they're gonna come over because I have things that they don't have and vice versa. So they're gonna bring their PRP and then we're gonna do laser hair removal. We're having like an afternoon of spa spa day for ourselves um, where we're gonna do the lasers that we have and I'm gonna do, and Jordan, my nurse Jordan's gonna do probably radio frequency microneedling topped with PRP and microneedling. So I do have, nice. my, but, how I think I'm going to do it is just smear the PRP on my face and then micro stamp it in as opposed oh, okay. to injecting it. 
Yeah, I did Vivace on my chest mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. Conveniently, the PRP rep was coming for lunch that day just to demo it. So I was like, here's my, get yeah. my blood in those 30 milliliter vacutainers. Those things mm -hmm. are huge. Um, so we just spread it on. Yeah. After. So we yeah. need the radio frequency part of it and then turn the yeah. energy off, change the depth, smear it on, boom, 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 boom. Oh, like, so you do that and put the radio frequency off. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because the idea is to maybe not coagulate. Like, yeah. So not the energy, like, so you don't coagulate the um, PRP. So that's what we're going right. to I do have a regular right. pin pen, but I love radio frequency and microneedling. We have the Virtue and it's so good. Like, there, it's really so it's so worth it to do that versus just straight microneedling. So. Nice. I'm excited to see the results. I need a couple more treatments on my chest. But. Mm -hmm. Are you doing fine lines? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, I get like you know those little vertical lines when you wake <laughs> up in the morning and your chest has all been pushed together and yeah, it's not awesome. So plus I already had a halo peel earlier, so I figured we'd hit my chest with that. But it was really comfortable. It was not uncomfortable. Oh yeah. On my chest. I think face maybe hurts, hence the numbing cream, but body's fine. Yeah, we do numb for that. And then I think I tried to turn it up on one of my treatments a couple of months ago, and I, I do have a high pain tolerance, hence my ability to take fat grafting to the face with just a local block. But um, I was tapping out at a certain level, and I was like, oh, yeah, we should just – and you get the same result, so there's really no right. reason like, to like, crank it and then just be miserable. Yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, so on the dare, I did get my fat. I got like 30 ish cc's of fat put in my face. And it, like I said, it's rejuvenating. I just don't know that it was excruciating to any area of my face that wasn't numb that couldn't be blocked was like, hardcore to get it injected. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd want to do that awake. Now and I had lipo awake and that was fine. But you too mess. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a big deal. It was like the areas of the face that weren't um, more painful. So yeah, although I guess sometimes in the body, because again, Dr. Gruber, apparently, Megan, I'm actually stalking you. Um, but I know she does fat grafting awake too. But I think she too messes right a little bit. Oh, uh, where she's putting it in? Does she yeah. do I'm trying to I've seen her do fat grafting to the breast awake on Instagram. Oh, so I'm curious. I think that's tolerable. But that's we probably tolerable. That. Yeah. It's not the same as getting, like, literally the upper third of your face just hurts. But whatever. It does. So, yeah. We're, don't um, discount it. You know, whenever you're in San Diego, we happy to, like, <laughs> do it for like, you. You know what? I'm just going to teach you that lateral brow lift technique, get your end of brow instruments. Oh, yeah. that. I can do that. Lift, but, yeah, lift. just. Oh no, you like the deep plane one. Yeah, I do the deep plane one where you release the ligaments. It's nice. Mm -hmm. okay. It's easy. Do you do those under local? I have. Yeah, actually, I have. Um, and those ones aren't bad. The only uncomfortable area is here: super trochlear, super orbital nerves. Those are easy to block. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is all subperiosteal, so that's not super sensitive. I just warned them ahead of time, you are going to hear metal scraping on your skull. And if you're yeah. not okay with that, let me know. But I've done a couple under local, and both patients did just fine. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that is the thing about doing stuff under local on the face, because you're right there, and they can hear everything. Yeah. You hear it. You hear it. Then that's a problem. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Yeah, I do know people who do facelifts under local, but I can't. I feel like it's a long time to sit awake and. Yeah, I uh, scrubbed in on one of those in residency. Did not, like zero out of five stars would not. <laughs> not enjoy it. Just like, I didn't like it as the resident. <laughs> <laughs> two thumbs down <laughs> yeah I think at some point the patient got nauseated from the pre-meds and then yeah. she vomited and was like oh I'm out I'll be in the corner staying sterile yeah no thank you yeah yeah absolutely all right well cool so I feel like we've covered surgeries we don't want to have and surgeries are on our wish list we've had. yeah and we're... we've had yeah. <laughs> covering the list um all right cool 
I think, oh, actually in two weeks, I'll be in Hawaii. Sorry. So we'll have to push it back. For thing. I know. I'm yeah. looking forward to that. Although I might be writing a book chapter and doing a lecture while I'm up there because I haven't done it yet. That's okay. <laughs> My get, husband. Get cracking. What? Get cracking so you can enjoy tonight. <laughs> I know. I'll start writing tonight. Why would you yeah. agree to do that? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. The same reason I needed to listen to that webinar about how to say no. So. Yeah. Well, when you feel like, <laughs> oh, it's important. It'll build my career. It's, yeah, I'm contributing. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> well, yeah, I would love to, um, we'll think of something or we can talk about hand rejuvenation. I, um, yeah. we chat about that next time and we'll set up a date and if anybody uh oh my daughter's just chiming in for the end um <laughs> if uh She's excellent. two minutes before we're done um if anybody has a suggestion for us to talk about um please dm us and if not we'll see you in like three or four weeks i guess or you can see dr greer on tiktok because she slays there and has I, like, I did get a hundred thousand messages. I did. That's amazing. I have like it was insane. It, it's like the it's the posting like five to six times a week, and commenting back when people comment on how I blink slower. Yeah, I mean it's a bit, but honestly, I get so many patients from there, Do and like they've all watched my videos. Yeah, and it's great because they actually, I see them. Hello, children. Um. They come in, they feel like they know me already. They've already heard my explanations on everything. Like we already have a relationship and it's so much easier for me doing a consult because like they've heard me talk about all this already. That's true. And you find that it's easier easier than Instagram? To, or you post the same frequency, right? Or no? Yeah, I do. And Instagram never took off. I just hit 3,000 and only because yeah. TikTok took off. I don't know, TikTok like, it just seems, I think everybody has their platform that works well for them. And that one works well for me. My attention span is short. I can do less than a three minute video. Yep. And yep. Props. Yeah. Cause yours is educational. That's what I appreciate that you hit a hundred thousand. Right. Without having to do like, I'm not dancing. I'm not yeah. a former cheerleader. I rarely do funny things. Although a couple of times I have. Yeah. It's just, and like half the time I'm not even wearing makeup. I'm just like on my couch with wet hair after a shower. And I'm like, Hey, let's talk about lip filler. I got some, it's swollen. There we go. That's the video. <laughs> well, that's awesome. And congratulations. And Thank you don't know what my girls are. My daughter has a couple friends over, so they're hysterical about something. I think they put Not themselves either. watching Instagram Live. I don't know, whatever. It's very meta. Enjoy, enjoy yeah. finding out. Yes, I can't wait. All right, well, it was good to see you. Talk later. You too. Yeah, right. bye. Wow.